Right now it is a quarter to eight. What happens if you mix the action and intrigue of espionage with the station wagon and chocolate chip cookies of a single a suburban mother of two? Well, in the case of Kate Jackson, you get a hit. Scarecrow and Mrs. King starts its fourth season this fall. And this year, some pretty interesting changes are in the works for Mrs. King. I spoke with Kate Jackson recently, and we began with a look at what might be called Mrs. King's recent change of heart. Oh, you know what? Hmm. You know what Norman called us earlier? Uh -uh. Regulars. Regular? Yeah. Really? <laughs> I kind of like it. What do you think? Well, I don't think we're regular at all. Ah, man. Oh, uh, come on. Not... Listen. We act like strangers at work. We sneak around and we invent stories about how we spend our evenings. I would love to be regular. Well, me too. And we will be. <laughs> Whoa, the kiss. All right, Kate, <laughs> what does this mean? Does this mean that you and uh, the Scarecrow are going to become uh, an item? I, I think we're going to become a little more romantically involved. So what happens here? I mean, do you desert the boys and go off? And I think you're also going to be... Are you going to be a full-fledged agent now? Well, I'm, I'm going to be uh, something more than a neophyte. Let's, let's put it that way. So this changes the, the whole dynamics, though, here a little bit. Well, it gives us the opportunity, I think, to, to let the show... Uh, grow in a, in a kind of an organic way you know the, the way we started when i first saw the pilot which was the first episode i looked at it in the streaming room and i thought well that's a great movie but how the heck do you make a series out of it it seemed to you know it seemed to be the, a complete thing in itself so we've had to to um i think of it sort of as a work in progress you know we let the characters grow and uh and try to to be true to the original concept and yet not to, to get so locked in that we do the same thing over and over again. Yeah, so that it's something a little bit new this season. Mm -hmm. Oh, there'll be uh, some things that a are quite a bit new. A lot of things new, I know. Yeah. I just want to, you're such a successful actress. I mean, you're not only the star of the show, but you, you're the producer of the show as well, co-producer. And are you a workaholic, or is it that important to have control over what you do? I mean, where does all this come from? I don't know exactly where it comes from. I think that... Um, uh, anybody who is, has, is, a, is a fairly creative person would like to have as much control as they can over the, uh, the project that they're working on. So this, uh, the, uh, the position that I'm in now gives me a little bit more uh, voice, a little bit more say-so in what's happening, and, and uh, is a little bit more fulfilling. Not everybody can pull that off, though. I mean, we hear so many stories about Hollywood deals fall apart because people can't agree. Stars ask for more than the producer thinks that they're worth. Where does this come from for you to let you be in a position where you are so in control of your career and, and to have that kind of control? Where does that kind of strength come from? I really don't know. I mean, you know, I, I, I have to say honestly that the, um, um, the visibility that uh, Charlie's Angels gave me was enormous. And um, I had, of course, worked before that and done other things and have done things since then. But I think that uh, I'm very conscientious, and I'm very tenacious, and uh, I like to work. I enjoy it. I enjoy the process, the creative process. And so I suppose um, as long as you can contribute ideas that are fairly decent and people are willing to listen, then you, you have a little bit more control than, than you would have perhaps if, if you weren't able to do that. And I know you enjoy doing it that way. And while you're doing all that, I should just bring up the fact that you are putting together a charity tennis tournament for the Los Angeles Police Department. Can you tell us about that? Well, yeah, the, the proceeds will go to prevent child abuse, to help find runaways and missing children. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful event that will be here in Los Angeles uh, at the end of October. And uh, we're all very excited about it. Such a good cause. Good luck with that. And, of course, good luck with your fourth season of the show. Thank you. And Joan, yes. I must mention that it will be on Friday nights at 8 o'clock now. Okay. Instead of Monday. Friday nights at 8 o'clock and Friday we'll be there. Friday nights at 8. Oh, you thank bet. you. Thanks bye bye. Bye bye. We'll be back.